Welcome to part 4 of EZFM tutorial. In this part we're going to take a look at the landing gear. I must warn you that this part is a little bit fiddly so maybe there's going to be a few fails here and there. So uh, I've already placed our jet somewhere closer to the ground so we don't have to always wait before checking if the gear actually works and if I try to play it now as you can see it goes straight to, uh, through the ground because as you may remember from previous parts I didn't add a, a collision model to it yet and I'm not going to do it still because I'm going to add a landing gear simulation first okay let's go to our blueprint select our static mesh and let's add a easy gear component to it like this of course it needs to be enabled and we need to add a new channels which uh, this is going to collide with Okay, let's add an element and world static will be selected by default. Now, uh, static objects in the world like terrain or, and so on are by default world static. You can also add world dynamic, uh, pawns and so on. Basically select which things you want landing gear to be able to sit on and which won't. Okay. For now, let's just add world static, substep, we can enable that, scale with mass on, scale grid limit uh, with strut compression. Um, now, what this does is uh, alternative uh, skid model in which uh, the grip is going to increase as more weight is applied to, to the tire. I prefer to have it on, but uh, if you find it counterintuitive, you can just turn it off. Let's also turn on draw debug so we can see what we are doing. Now, debug like compensation. Uh, there's a, I don't know if it's a bug or feature in uh, current versions of Unreal Engine 4 that cause um, objects uh, draw by debug to be displayed with uh, one frame delay so this thing can uh, compensate for it and draw them a little bit in advance uh, now if it's fixed in later versions of Unreal you can turn it off uh, steer to vector we are not going to turn on yet because uh, uh, this is uh, sort of uh, guided steering uh, which we're not using yet and maybe we'll discuss it in some later part and steer to vector sensitivity is related to it let's ignore it next thing we need to enable are individual wheels so nose left right and of course we need to set location of these wheels uh, so, nose location long longitude, we're going to put some, let's say, 200 or 2 meters in front of the center of the parent object. Uh, location vertical, we're going to leave at zero. And strut length will be 100 unreal units or 1 meter. Now, this, of course, uh, is... Uh, depends on uh, on the model you're simulating you of course have to like uh, line it up with your visual model let's continue and do the same for main wheels namely it's gonna go into negative direction longitude let's say one meter uh, lateral is of course distance between wheels or uh, rather the distance between uh, wheels uh, lateral position and the center of the object 
let's say two meters vertical breaker will leave at zero and strut length will be 100 let's see what happens if we try to simulate it now nothing happens and as you can see in debug we can see why because I attached it wrong okay gear needs to be a child object of the static mesh let's see now and now we can see the wheels but they are still not working and I'm going to show you why and the reason is that uh, even though it is simulating it doesn't apply any forces due to strength of the spring being zero so let's change that let's start with some random number um, because scale with mass is enabled uh, the weight of the of the object is irrelevant so let's just put it down there same with main wheels and see what happens whoa at least we see it's working now these were not the right values now as you can imagine trying to set them by pure guesswork like this is a rather stupid approach uh, so let's do something else let's add a hitbox to our model auto collision and let's add this one looks good to me and let's take scientific approach okay let's start with strength uh, of spring 980 because this is the uh, gravity acceleration of the default unreal world same goes for main spring let's put 980 there and because we already have a hitbox even if those numbers are too low it's not gonna fall through the terrain let's see yep now we have some sort of landing gear but it has two issues namely it's a bit too bouncy and second of all it slides too much to reduce bounciness uh, we are going to turn up shock absorption let's start with one same for main wheels and see what happens now this reduced bounciness by quite a lot and I just noticed another problem uh, that when it's crossing uh, individual quads of the terrain it's glitching a little bit and this can be fixed by increasing size of the wheels this is rather simple let's set wheel radius this is of course also in unreal units let's put 10 to nose gear and main wheels will be a little bigger say about 20 okay that's going to fix the glitching and now the last issue is that uh, it's sliding this of course happens because there, there are no tires it's just uh, force acting uh, out of the terrain and to change that we're going to increase nose grip uh, I should also warn you that the tire simulation in this is very simplified okay don't don't try to build your next set of course around it and let's see what happens if we put 10 in there the glitching has stopped but we are still sliding and this happens because we have one more thing you we need to set and that's grip limit this is 
of course, the maximum amount of grip the tire can apply, regardless of, of its velocity. In other words, when you when you go past this value, it's no longer going to increase, and the wheel is going to slip. So let's start with say 100 and this should already fix the sliding yeah sliding is gone now of course for your own game you're gonna have to do a bit more tweaking to find the right balance and so on but for this tutorial I think this is all except yeah one more thing I need to show you and that's that's nose wheel steering. Hold on a second, I need to find my joystick. There it is. And let's turn on the nose wheel steering. Of course, it needs to be enabled and you need to set max angle that the uh, nose wheel can deflect in either direction. This is in degrees, let's put 13 there. It's gonna have quite large turn radius, but never mind. Now we are going to do the actual steering by changing gears steering input like this. Let's link it to our yaw. So same control that controls rudder in air is going to control no steering on the ground. Let's see if it works. Okay, let's steer. Oh, it's a bit slidey, but as you can see, steering works. And there's just one more thing that's slightly related, and that's brakes. Brakes work in a similar way. Set brake power for main wheels. Let's say 20. Uh, you can also enable ABS. Let's do that too. And we of course need some control to link brake input into. Now brake input is uh, separate for left and right gear. So let's add left brake input and right brake input. We're gonna use same control for both like this, let's go to project settings and let's create a new binding let's call it break and link it to let's say right trigger Save and our new input event is going to be controlling brakes. And since our last attempt was a bit slidey, I'm going to increase grip and grip limit because if we are sliding, we cannot really brake just like in real world. Let's see. Sliding down the hill and let's hit the brakes. Slowly slowing down and the brakes work. And that concludes this part of the tutorial. In next one we'll take a look at propulsion.